I came to the United States when I was very small, so I can't remember exactly, um, you know, how old I was. Denise Amesquita says her parents brought her here legally when she was about three years old. So tourist visa, we came in, um, I guess you could say with a visa already on us. Diana Ojeda was also brought to the States and using a visa. My mom brought me actually using her friend's baby's visa. Both are undergraduates hoping to become attorneys. Denise says she may never see her grandmother again. If the time comes where she does pass away, I wouldn't be able to go visit her funeral. She's a DACA recipient. Diana says she's currently undocumented, but pursuing DACA status herself. Yeah, if anything happens, our family is definitely split. Jesus Lucero says they're undocumented, brought to the country when they were four. My dad has been picked up by ICE. My younger brother has been a target of Custom and Border Protection in the past. Hasu says their family has endured tough days during the Trump presidency. During the pandemic, right around Mother's Day again, when my brother's DACA had expired, they um, they threatened to arrest him again. Sleepless nights for me and my, and my parents. This group of undergrads are among the 400,000 reported to be undocumented or under some migrant status studying in the country today, working toward their goals under a shadow of constant fear. For Denise, fear that her parents could be sent away. Like one day if they were to be deported, you know, I would be head of the household and trying to figure out how to pay bills, how to do college, how to raise my, you know, younger sibling, take care of my grandmother. She says right now she can't even get some jobs. Trying to get a job where it doesn't require to look at my social. Diana says she can't make a living either. So I don't drive and nor do I work. It sounds like a situation, I don't want to presume anything, but it sounds like a situation where if you could drive, if you could work, you would choose to. Definitely. Jesus says their fate rests in the hands of immigration courts. The only hope we have is that the wait list gets shortened, that processing, processing times shrink. As students, they have one other hope, Scholarships AZ. We are connecting youth to the resources that do exist and helping them create a plan. A plan, Dario Andrade Mendoza with Scholarships AZ says, will help them achieve at the very least their educational aspirations. Dario says as more of their members become professionals, in Denise and Diana's case, attorneys, it grows their community. And she will actually create a path that then we are able to guide other like future students. Denise, Diana, and Jesus all say they hope to see some measure of immigration reform that provides a path for them to become citizens. Um, just like Wadaka, we didn't imagine it was going to be reinstated and all of a sudden it was. So anything could happen, we just have to keep our hopes up. They say while one administration can make things more difficult. In general, I just hope the Biden administration just helps get the act together. They've learned they'll need to rely less on the president and more so on each other and their own wills to get by. I think my goal isn't necessarily to adjust my status, it's for the government to adjust how they see us. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with me. Rogelio Mares, KGUN 9, on your side.